Language is a, it plays a central role in my uh, work with media, and it began with my association with Marshall McLuhan. Uh, as you might know, that McLuhan considered language as a technology because it's an organized system of uh, communication and informatics. So one of the central ideas in my work is that language is both a system of communication and it's an informatics tool. The very first uh, work that I did with McLuhan dealt with the role of the phonetic alphabet. So using a phonetic alphabet to write teaches me to analyze the sounds of words. So the alphabet promotes analysis. It also promotes coding because I code the sounds of words with meaningless signs, namely the letters of the alphabet. I decode when I read. I also have a classification system in the sense that I can order all the words in my language in alphabetical order. So, and finally, the alphabet is a, the most abstract form of writing. The reason is that in a pictogram, you can sort of see the image of the word that is being depicted. But with the alphabet, there is absolutely no correspondence between the word and the shapes of the letters of the alphabet. So we have a very abstract system. So the alphabet promotes analysis, coding, decoding, classification, and abstraction. These are all the tools we use to create science. After McLuhan passed away, I wanted to continue my work in uh, understanding the impact of, of language and technology. And just at that time, which was uh, the beginning of the 80s, microcomputers were coming on stream and they were entering the school system. So I made a study of impact of computers on schools. And uh, before I know it, I was appointed to the Faculty of Education at the University of Toronto, where I'm a physics professor. And my colleagues were constantly talking about the computer as an informatic device. And I kept pointing out to them it is also a medium of communication. Well, rather than fight with them, I came up with the idea that the computer is both a medium of communication and an informatic tool. And then all of a sudden, the work on the alphabet came back to me, and I realized the alphabet was also communications and informatics. And then I realized that spoken language itself is also a form of communication, but is also a way in which we formulate our ideas. Imagine trying to think without language. It's a pretty hard thing to do. Maybe you can get an image of a, a visual scene, or maybe you can remember a melody. But if you want to talk about anything, you want to describe anything, you must use words. So language is both informatics and communication. And so I realized there was a connection between spoken language, mathematics, writing, science, computing, and the internet. From my way of thinking, these form six independent forms of language. Not totally independent, but each new language that arose carried w into it the language of the previous form. So for instance, writing and mathematics emerges in Sumer around 3000 BC. The reason it emerged was that there was a need to record the tributes given by farmers to the priests. They had to keep a record of who paid their taxes. The priests had to collect the food grown by the farmers to redistribute to the irrigation workers so that they could feed their families. And writing emerges, uh, and of course it incorporates spoken language because it's a representation of spoken language. And at the same time, uh, numbers appear because the uh, priests who were acting as accountants made records of how much, 
how many uh, measures of wheat were distributed, how many lambs were given, how many jars of oil. And so writing and mathematics emerge at exactly the same point in history. But you might say, well, writing and, ma and, and speech are, are the same language. But they're really not the same language. And the reason is that the grammatical structure of written language is more formal than the structure of spoken language. Also, the vocabulary of written language is much richer than the vocabulary of spoken language. When we write a composition, an essay, or a book, we make use of words that we don't use in ordinary conversation with our friends and our family. If we look at the vocabulary of Homer, who composed his stories orally, and we look at the vocabulary used by the Greek philosophers, uh, Plato, Aristotle, and the pre-Socratic philosophers like Thales, Anaximander, Heraclides, we see that the language of the philosophers contains many new terms that did not exist in Homer. There's an explosion of the vocabulary with abstract terminology. Also, there are new grammatical constructions in the written language that didn't exist in the spoken language. So writing and math are two separate languages. Uh, writing and speech are two separate languages. What about mathematics? Well, the words of mathematics, when you say 2 plus 2 equals 4, you're using the words of speech. That is true. But mathematics has its own structure, its own kind of grammar, and the grammar of mathematics is spoken language. And the symbols of, of uh, mathematics. Uh, the numerals correspond to spoken words, it's true, but then you have various logical uh, operators, like the sign for less than, or the sign for more than, or the sign for equal. So there's a new vocabulary that arises in math. Now, in order to teach reading, writing, and arithmetic, schools had to be organized to teach these new languages of writing and mathematics. And that gave rise to school teachers, and the school teachers became scholars because they had to prepare lessons for their students, and they started to make lists. So a teacher that made a list of all the animals became interested in biology, and a teacher that made a list of all the kings became interested in political science. So before you know it, you have an explosion of knowledge. And in order to deal with the overload of information created by these teachers, science arises to organize the information created by the teachers. By the way, I should mention that the uh, mathematics and writing, again, was motivated by the information overload when the priests in Sumer couldn't keep track of all the tributes that were coming to them. Now, with science, there's another explosion of activity. We get technology that is science-based. We get uh, explosion of population. The emergence of science is around 2000 BC. But uh, the next language, the language of computing, doesn't occur until the end of the 19th century in the form of computing. The first computing was not done with uh, electronic computers. It was done with punched hole cards by International Business Machine, that's IBM. 